we're Chris and Teresa, and we would love to guide you on your fiber arts journey. We own a successful fiber processing mill and online needle felting business, experienced at raising all fiber animals, and have renovated a hundred year old school into a fiber arts retreat center. Processing, needle felting, yarn, roving, fiber animals, and sustainable agriculture are all topics discussed here. Think of this as your one stop shop for advice, information, tips, and getting your questions answered on all things from farm to needle. So pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be inspired while you learn. This is YouTube. Welcome to YouTube 181. We are in the studio, and the first thing we'd like to do is introduce you to another amazing staff member, Kristen Frey. So here we are with Kristen Frazier. She is our executive director of uh, the Gnome University, which is our nonprofit. And just tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you're from. Yeah. Your family. Um, they've seen maybe a little bit. I've been on twice now. I, about, I should have gone back and checked what I wore in those videos to see if I was wearing something different, but did not think of that. But um, yes, my name's Kristen. I live in West Fargo with my husband and my two little boys. Um, one is four and one's a year and a half. I uh, also have a dog. Um, she's my main hobby right now. We do dog agility. We have a trial coming up in Fargo, so yay dog agility if you're into that. Um, and yeah, I've been working here for about six months. Got into some needle felting. Um, what else, what else? James and I, my husband, both grew up southwest corner of Minnesota, a small little town, like a thousand people. So that's where we grew up. We're used to small class sizes, small business, Main Street kind of good stuff. And then he went to school at NDSU. Um, he took five years to graduate. I only took four. So after I graduated um, out in Michigan, I came here and I, I swore like, we're, like it was weird, like this Fargo, North Dakota area. I'm not sure how I feel about this. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm going to move up here. We got married, right? Moved up here. You have a year to graduate and then we're getting out of here. Well, he got done with that and then got a good job with Bobcat. And so he worked there for a few years. We're like, okay, pad your resume and then we'll get out of here. <laughs> and, um, 11 years later, we're in West Fargo with a house and two boys and a dog and he works for Case now. And so we've ended up uh, liking it. Good. So. Good. I'm glad because... Here we I found am. you. And <laughs> so we hired her uh, mainly here for the, to work at the school, at the Gnome Schoolhouse. But then she also came with uh, a wonderful background in nonprofits. Yes. So share a little bit about that. Yeah, I have just under 10 years of work experience with nonprofits. I started working for my first nonprofit in 2013. I had a business communication background, really kind of wanted to dabble in some event planning, um, but I was working at Wells Fargo as a teller and a banker, so that was okay. Um, so worked for Valley Christian Counseling Center for quite a long time, doing their fundraising, um, mailing, we set up a whole mailing system. Um, they had really done nothing like that before, they hadn't done much fundraising, so events and direct mail and emails and building relationships with donors and going out for coffee meetings and uh, making a bunch of connections. So worked there for quite a while and then uh, worked at New Life Center in Fargo for two years as a donor relations manager. So really focused on um, meeting with donors face to face and getting to know them and their passions for the nonprofit and connecting them the best that way. So I. I really like generosity. Um, I really like finding what people are passionate for. And if that's the nonprofit I work for, finding ways to connect them, which is a lot of fun for me. And uh, yeah, so that's, I've always been on the fundraising side, primarily um, with just little dabbles here and there on program sides. And I like nonprofits because people have to be passionate to be involved, whether they work, volunteer, or um, give monetarily it it has to be a passion so that's a lot of fun so chris and i were super excited to have her take over some of that responsibility um, as executive director because we have no nonprofit <laughs> experience and we wanted somebody to take our dreams and you know help make them come true and she's doing an excellent job very organized and doing you know just she just knows so much about it so and we do have a fundraiser we're working on right now Yes. 
and it's the Giving Hearts Day, which is coming up. We've talked about it in the past episodes, mm -hmm. and um, Kristen can give you a little lowdown on. Yeah, we have the exciting news today. It's a good time to check in. Um, we just had to finish up our match. So this is the first day we can say that we have $7,000 in match for the day. So if you give on Giving Hearts Day, your gift will be matched up to $7,000. And you can give online, givingheartsday.org, search for Gnome University, and you can just search for Gnome. I'm sure we're the only ones that pop up. And, uh, or you can give by check and mail that in to the university, which is the same address as the schoolhouse address. And if you date that check February 9, it'll get counted towards that match. And I'm really excited for where this will go. There'll be a couple places this money will really impact. Um, our usual programs, which is our classes, activities, some education that we do, um, but renovating, um, possibly updating like the barn. I don't know if they can see the barn and all the snow. The barn, fencing, getting that fiber flock on site this year, because um, that'll be great uh, for our education program, especially the new education program we're working on, which is to help schools and 4-H groups and FFA, FLA, I don't know what they're all called anymore. I don't have any kids in high school. I don't have to worry <laughs> about these groups yet. Um, I guess 4-H starts way younger than high school, but um, yeah, they call all the time. And as the schoolhouse side venue coordinator, I get these calls from school groups, other groups, homeschool groups, wanting to tour the fiber mill, which the schoolhouse offers, but the cost of it I mean, we have to pay for the fiber mill shutting down production to get people through it. And so the cost isn't like the best field trip cost for a school. Um, and that's the Gnome Schoolhouse's business. And that's the for-profit, right? And so the university was like, well, we have to do something. Education and providing this kind of experience, especially for youth, um, future leaders of tomorrow and all that. Like, we need to do that. So we're working on setting a program. We got a little subcommittee that are super experienced, um, you know, past teachers, fiber enthusiasts, um, who want to create this full experience for mainly youth and school groups to come in um, and get materials to learn about the history of fiber processing and agriculture and art, and then also modern day practices. They'd get like a hands-on activity and a tour of the fiber mill and some one-on-one -on -one time with Chris and Teresa and package it up in a way that's really useful for schools and then also the university would cover that cost um, so it would be cost effective and um, work for the schools and work for the fiber mill our for-profit business um, in losing that production time during these tours so it's all in the works so the details are coming yet but we need the funding to kind of help scholarship these kids um, through this program that we're working on so it's a lot of fun it's fun to watch like Teresa's on the subcommittee, you and the other subcommittee's gears turn and um, yes. get really excited. And that's the fun part. They're all, you guys are just really excited to offer this. Mm -hmm. And that's so much fun. It's not, you know, it's not a business plan to make money. It's a passion to share with our neighbors. Yes, and we have so many ideas. I can't wait. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. This has been fun. Um, so this was Kristen. And she'll be back again for another interview because she works for the Gnome Schoolhouse too. Yeah, I'll check all my outfits and make sure I wear something new. Me too. Maybe. <laughs> Thank you, Kristen. That Thank was, you, Kristen. That was she so She says well. things so much better than She's me. She's so do. eloquent. Eloquent. <laughs> Just so eloquent. Okay, and then another thing we, we had fun today doing was we lined up the spinning wheels and we tried them all out. We tried them all out. We used a, um, a really pretty roving that we did down in the mill uh, a, a couple days ago. And it's all and, the perfect colors of green and brown. Oh, yeah. It's just mm -hmm. so, it's just soothing and so pretty. A spa blue color. And yeah, so pretty. Is there blue in there? I call it spa blue. It's kind of green blue. It's really pretty. And it spun beautifully. It did. I am on. The Spinolution Polywog, and I really like it. It's very small. It would be a really nice one to, to transport. Yes. Um, and this was maybe I'm partial to it because this is the one that my four-year-old granddaughter also 
thought was learning on. Yes, thought that that would be a good one for her because it's, it's small. So yeah, it's just small. And right now we have it's got it's almost it's like it's designed for your toes to to treadle. It's got these tiny little. Um, they're probably about an inch wide, would you say? And and so. I guess we didn't find that real comfortable to spin on and maybe just because we're not used to it because we're used to bigger flappy, you know, for like the ball of your foot. To... So then yeah. Teresa ordered these, um, what do you call them? Extensions Extens or? They're extension. They call them treadle flippers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't need a hook to, or fist hook. Is that what they're called? Mm -hmm. Or fist hook. So here's the little flappers. Mm -hmm. See, you can take them off, and then this is what. You this is what you would use elsewise. And so we were trying to make it more comfortable, and these are from mm -hmm. Spin Perfect, mm -hmm. uh, which is this separate company. Yeah. But you yeah. have to really cram them on there to get them to yeah. not hit. Mm -hmm. Are they hitting? Oh no, they're, they're not. not hitting. Yeah. But it's and very smooth. This is you don't have a you don't have to stick it through a hole. Yep. An orifice. Yep. It's just it's this just hook. this little hooky thing. Mm hmm And you can also um, add an extension on, so it would be higher. Mmm. We haven't gotten that, that yet. That might be helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I am spinning on the shot matchless now. I need one of those hookies. And I don't need a hooky because <laughs> I'm on a spin illusion. This is the spin illusion echo, mm. which we have had on here before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's got a little funny little noises coming little. from this guy, yeah. which it didn't do before. <laughs> mm. Why are you doing this? I wonder if it's, mm -hmm. I may mm. have messed with it too much. Oh, with the um, oh, I like this one. It's very smooth. Isn't very it? smooth. Yeah, I think I was. Trying. Yeah, polywog. That was, that was nice. But I think you know now that I'm sitting up straighter, I think I, I would appreciate the extension on that one. Yeah. But this is nice. It's a beautiful wheel too. Mm-hmm. This is the one that I chose because everybody, that one is, mm -hmm. uh, because everybody had told me that that's the Cadillac. And this one is the Cadillac? Yeah, it's very nice. Well, it's only, is this one, how much is this one retail for? And it's very smooth and the treadles are nice and wide for my big feet, because I have kind of big feet. This, um, this is the Spinolution Echo, and what I really like about um, the Spinolutions is the ease to remove oh. its magnets. And so and then this just pops out. And then you can replace this you know, with the one that's not full, and then you put it back on, and it just snaps into place, and you snap this on. Wow. And then you start spinning. And there isn't, uh, you don't need an orifice hook because there is no need for it because it just goes around this hook here. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And how was it, is it comfortable to try? Yeah. Mm -hmm. These have, it's just like the pad of your foot on here that's, that's pumping it. Mm -hmm. So this is how uh, flipping, taking it, this one off is. Mm. Oh, okay. So, so it's a little bit more involved. Mm -hmm. 
and changing this out. Mm. And then you put a new one on. Mm-hmm. So then, you know, what I have... This would take then, a little practice. Yes, but yeah. even then, even, you know, because this is what I have at home. Yeah. And even after doing it, how many times, it still falls off the wheel, and you still have to re-do it. This is the spin Yeah, so this is the polywog, and this one is the one that you can have the extension added on, so it's taller. You have enough? Mm -hmm. But it is low even for a short person. <laughs> you know, this mm -hmm. This is quite handy low it just is. to just to stick it. It is very nice. Stick it on. I don't know if I like these paddles. Oh you don't? Well Do you see what they're I mean? Up higher. Yeah, they are. Well, this Think is so. a nice one, too. They make my feet not be touching the ground. My heels aren't touching. Oh. Do you feel, do you see what I mean, where you feel like you have to hold them on? I feel like outward pressure. This is not bad. This is a little getting used to because the treadling is very different. Yeah. But I like it. I didn't think I'd like it. You didn't think you'd like the echo? Yeah, because of the, because the treadle is like a teeter-totter instead of a paddle. Yeah. But I like it. Oh, and it, you know, I don't know what it is with the spin illusion. Look at how, in there, that's mesmerizing too. I know. And um, when you get them to assemble them is really easy. Mm-hmm. Which one did we assemble the last time? That was the... The matchless. Oh yeah, this one. No. No, that the big one. one. Yeah, the, sh the shock mat matchless. And, and the Ash for Joy was easy to assemble too. I just unfolded it. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm spinning on the Ash for Joy, which is, a f it folds up really nice. It has, you know, a nice place to grab it and carry it. It's got a case too. And it has like a backpack that you can stick it in, and you can actually take it on an airplane. Can you? Mm-hmm. Do you have to check it? I can't remember. I just remember something about taking it on an airplane. Interesting. Maybe it fits in the overhead compartment, I bet. Maybe. Um, and Chris is spinning on the shock ladybug, mm -hmm. which is, you know, set up in the same kind of as the matchless. It is. It's a no, cheaper, it. you know, yeah. version. Uh, it has the inlay though here too, mm -hmm. which is really nice. It's like they have the same. Yeah. It has um, a different for the tension. Mm -hmm. It has a scotch tension, but to tighten oh, yeah. up your wheel, mm -hmm. you just mm -hmm. put that up and down. We're on the mm -hmm. the matchless. There's a thing you turn up here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in uh, when I was learning how to spin all in the Wooly Women <laughs> group, every one of them had one of these joys. And I had a traditional. And I always, they always come in their little packs. <laughs> and they unfolded them, so cute. And started spinning away. And it spins very nice. Mm. So is this one. Yeah. You know, I hate to say it, but I like all of them. I know. They're all... I hate... They all have their... I shouldn't say I hate to say it, but I do. I well, like all of them. Well, sometimes you need to collect wheels. Um, this one is, you know, between this and the polywog for traveling, out of the ones that we have here mm -hmm. are great. This one is for traveling, too. See, it has handles for easy carrying, mm -hmm. and it is lighter. It has... Mm -hmm. It's made out of lighter wood. Mm -hmm. Um... But the polywog is smaller than this one, mm -hmm. but this one comes in the handy little case and folds. Mm -hmm. And the if you want a really pretty one for your living room that you probably wouldn't take places, mm -hmm. is the matchless 
which is the shop matchless. However, it does, you can put wheels on it and um, mm. on the bottom and then you just tip it up and wheel it wherever you need to go. And it has a strap that you can hook on it. Mm -hmm. mm. And I used to have a custom, well, I shouldn't say used to have, I used, I used to be part of Teresa and I getting, getting together. I was a custom craft dealer and that was an all aluminum spinning wheel. Which um, we've shared, but it's yeah, been many episodes ago. many episodes ago. And that is a large production wheel that weighs a ton and you don't haul that. I mean, I did, but it was not fun yeah. to haul anywhere. But I mean, then that spun very smooth and very nice. And, and there's very, these are all varying price points. Mm -hmm. um, uh, out of all of these wheels, the Matchless is probably the most expensive here. Uh, we do have a bullfrog, which we're going to showcase on another episode. Mm -hmm. That's a Spinolution bullfrog, and that's for spinning like chunkier yarn on. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're also getting an Ashford kiwi and uh, e-spinner, so an ele electric spinner. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be sharing more about them and when the, we get Yeah, the them. electric spinners are like tabletop spinners, right? Mm -hmm. The ones I've seen. I'm and assuming you, that's what you got. Yeah. Yes, and then you... Um, can either like just poke, push on something with your foot to get it to go and to stop, and then you like just, a you just machine. yeah. So you just have to hold the and control the the spin with your hands here like this. But I like it. it does the rest. You don't have to do anything mm -hmm. with your feet. Nice. And the the ladybug, they always put their. There's a little ladybug on the ladybug somewhere. Oh. And they're always in a different spot. I see it. Yeah, I see it too. But yeah, they're, I mean, they're unique. Each one of them is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was fun to use all the wheels and the synopsis is they're all amazing. Amazing. Yeah, I was kind of shocked that I liked all of them. Because they were all so different. Well, and different and uses. Yeah. And different reasons why you would like them. Mm-hmm. So I understand now why people have... A collection. Eight, nine wheels. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So that was and fun. And so um, mm -hmm. we sell all of them in the store. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can come and try them anytime. Anytime. Yes. That is, and we're going, there is a class scheduled. It's coming up. Yep. So we'll yep. talk about that a little bit later. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So you want to talk about the Craft Industry Alliance podcast. People who don't have an understanding of the crafts industry in particular and maybe come into a business like yours that's making yarn and selling yarn to knitters um, and crocheters and spinners as... Um, as something that's like a little hobby or, f you know, only for some sector of the population mm -hmm. that they deem less important or valuable or whatever. And so you were having to come in and say, actually, this is a huge hobby. It's as big as golf and you need right. to understand it just because the majority of people who do this are female or maybe you don't understand it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist and isn't you know, uh, actually a, a large and profitable uh, sector. Amen. Yes. I, so I listened to this Craft Industry Alliance. I'm also a member. And I love to listen to podcasts while I'm felting. And um, this one, I mean, it said everything that we have felt. Mm -hmm. That, you know, it is as big as golf. <laughs> Even if could be, just because you haven't heard of it, yeah, doesn't mean it's not. I mean, because we struggled for this whole project trying to tell people this is a viable thing. It um, people yeah. do like it. It's a it's like golf, really. It's like it's, golf. That just or hunting, that made me laugh or, out loud when she yeah. said that. And, yeah, and that's very much exactly, so. Very much um, so. The way people that are into fiber arts feel about fiber arts. Mm -hmm. Yep. And one thing I did, she did mention is, you know, it's, it's women driven, which, you know, possibly might be true, but I know I, I had that spinning wheel dealership prior to us partnering. And the first three wheels I sold to were men. Mm -hmm. 
that that purchased them so there's a lot of men out there in the the fiber arts industry and as well but a lot of the mm -hmm. people that we were dealing with and trying to convince that this was yes. a, a viable business were men <sighs> were men so, that probably golfed right and they mm -hmm. had never heard of this didn't mm -hmm. think that this was something that would that would work Yep. And so this really struck home. I sent it on to Chris. I said, you got to listen to this. <laughs> I, what, I listened to it a couple times and went, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this says what, yeah. you know, what we've dealt with. And so other people deal with it too. Yeah. So it was kind of fun. Yeah. To, to Absolutely. To. Absolutely. That, that was cool, cool, cool. Yeah. And then we have a school picture that was shared that we had never seen. Yes. So Randy, he's given us a yes. lot of pictures. Yes. He shared on, uh, he has a Gnome, Gnome North Dakota mm -hmm. uh, Facebook group. Mm -hmm. And he shared this picture of the front of the school. And it, we had asked so many times to the alumni and, mm -hmm. you know, the community why this, which we should have gotten a picture of. We I should will. be able to find a picture. Yeah. Yeah. This, the, this arch. The arch uh, where there was obviously a roof yeah. <laughs> of some sort. Yeah. And we didn't understand because it was different than when when we bought it. Yeah. Because that was inside of the other roof that, yeah. And so this picture showed that that was mm -hmm. the original coal storage to the side. And it was like mostly underground. And then there was just this little mm -hmm. roof. Yeah. And then on the inside, in Clink's room, you can mm -hmm. see where the coal must have come in. And that's been all bricked over. Mm-hmm. And, things, and, so. and definitely different than than what we the, saw when we yeah. bought it. Mm -hmm. So they must have expanded it, made it mm -hmm. bigger, mm -hmm. um, up on top. But when we purchased it, it was all ca you know caving in on that. So we tore that off. Mm -hmm. But it's still fun to see what it looked like. Yes. The beginning. That was the picture is 1923. Yes. And. Uh, we were so curious about the front with the, there's like an awning going mm -hmm. over the front steps and then there's yeah. two um, cement yeah. um, side thingies. Yeah, I don't know how to, I don't know how to describe, I mean, they're wide. They're about, oh goodness, I bet two, three feet wide. Mm -hmm. And we kind of wanted to replicate that mm -hmm. and we couldn't find any, in most of the pictures we have, they're just. And even this one, they're kind of hard to see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we kind of, we would like to do that again. As well as the awning. Because it yes, gets it's really very, hot yeah, in the summertime. Yeah, it's cute. I mean, it adds mm -hmm. something to the front of the school. So we'd mm -hmm. like to do that again. Mm -hmm. So we really like to see this picture. And we could see the playground equipment over to the right where the gym mm -hmm. is. Well, it's kind of to the east of where the gym is now. Mm -hmm. But it's fun to see all of that and... Yeah. How it used to be. Yeah. <laughs> we burned wool. We well, so. we did not burn wool because right. wool is fire retardant. Well, because last time mm -hmm. we were asked, so we had made a lampshade mm -hmm. and someone had mentioned, I wonder how, you know, the, it heat. Would, the heat from the light bulb, how that would work with the, the wool mm -hmm. on the lampshade. And we said that you know, it's naturally fire retardant. And so we just wanted to do a little demonstration on yeah. how fire retardant it is. Yeah. So uh, Chris was lighting it on fire and it doesn't, like, you can't, it's really, really, really hard to burn. Yeah, it doesn't, it's, it says <clears throat> it's self-extinguishing and we could, we got like a couple little flames on the raw wool that was still in the grease, but then right away, it puts itself out, mm -hmm. whereas we had a piece of felt, a piece of wool felt, and we and, and it just wouldn't. It kind of like melted a little bit, but it would never flame at all. Mm -hmm. So, and, yeah, pretty and we, amazing. We have learned this before because mm -hmm. we have, like when we're shearing, we take all the belly wool and the leg wool, which mm -hmm. is, we don't have any really use for, mm -hmm. and we burn that. And I know my husband has, it takes a long time yes. to try, and you have to put other things in there to get it to burn. Yep. So it, it's yep. not, there isn't any worry that this lampshade mm -hmm. is going to have any yep. issues. Yeah, and my husband would get so upset. You know, prior to us partnering and we had the mail, if, if I got a box that had wool moths in it or something and the customer, I give the customer the option of, 
I can destroy it or I can ship it back to you and they, every single one says, just get rid of it, I'm so sorry. And my husband would just get so mad. It's like, now I have to deal with this because it doesn't, doesn't burn. burn. And yeah, so it takes a large amount of accelerant on the gas, oil, whatever it is to get it to disappear. Yeah. Yes. Unfortunately. And it really bad. It does. And my hair, I'm sure. And we have to go speak. Still smells we have to go like speak it. speak at an event tonight. <sighs> yes. It doesn't smell like burn well. Yeah. But, you know, That's maybe weird. they expect that. <laughs> They do by now, maybe. Yes. Yeah. You know, and I want to explain something. Speaking of, I don't know why this reminded me, is I just looked down and I still have. I'm Are you sure wearing I'll, that tonight? <laughs> no. I have, the, we have smocks that, that they're hairdresser smocks that we have for all the, 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 anyone who works down in the mill because they repel fibers like when you know you're getting your hair cut and it, it just repels that so i oftentimes forget to take mine off like now so anywho that's that's what the smocky thing that i have on most of the time it's a hairdresser smock and we have them all over the mill teresa has one too but she is never i do have it. one yeah it's down there in its little package yet for you <laughs> yep my mother doesn't wear one either when she sews because I told her because she will sit there with a tweezer and pick out all the chat. What are you doing? Taking pictures. They're not quite ready to be revealed yet. So right. just hold on here. And <laughs> anywho, and she won't wear one either. And I told her, you're just repels all this, these little flecks and whatnot. But that's what, that's, it's not like the same shirt that I'm wearing all the time. It's actually a smock. Okay, I'm done. You're, you can introduce them now. So, we've had a baby. Yes. <laughs> yes. Just one. Just one. There's twins. Yes. Mm -hmm. And she's still... She's in ICU. <laughs> she's and having a tough... The second one is tough. She's going to yeah. need a little help with that one, so... But bring on and her... It might happen... Well, it could happen later tonight. It might happen later. You never know of these things. So bring the boy on. So the first baby mm -hmm. is a little boy. Isn't he adorable? He is just so adorable. So adorable. <laughs> and he's walking. You Already, know, because yeah. he's just so he's just so full of energy. He's just like <laughs> twins. Yes. <laughs> Just, oh, when are you going to be born? Yes, so he's waiting. Yes, he's just waiting for his yeah. twin. Yes. And so we're excited to know whether that, you know, the twin is the is a matching boy or another girl or a girl or we'll see. We'll see. Maybe later tonight. Yep. Oh, he's so adorable. <laughs> he's so adorable. Yeah, so so anywho, we'll keep you posted on that. Yeah. Mhm. Mm Brown hunt. Brown stuff. Oh, brown. He's okay, we've struggling. been we've been testing pH. We've been fiddling. We are st still struggling with brown. Now we tried Ashford dye products, and Ashford dye followed was, the instructions. To followed pee. the instructions to T, and we're still all our other colors. I mean, we're it's. I mean, because so we're so reluctant to to really start introducing different mordants or changing everything because the only thing we're having problems with is brown. Oh, and sometimes we get, now this, the Ashford, it looks more like mauve. So it has, oh, excuse me, it has a purple hue to it. <laughs> Sorry. Which we used to have a problem with black yeah. having a purple hue. No problem anymore. Black just is black. It doesn't matter if we use Cushing's or Jacquard or whatever. We get just a beautiful black. Um, but this brown, this is what we're struggling an with. Issue. It's an ongoing issue. And we're trying all the different dyes. We have all more the different. You, I, it, yeah. Because we used to dye brown and it was never a problem. Never a problem. And we had three shades of brown. Mm -hmm. Use one brown for a kit. Uh huh. And you just decrease the amount to get the lighter shades. And. 
that has been for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And then they changed the diet. The formulation. It said right on there, change the formulation. And then it was no good from there. It's like a more yeah. orangey brown. And then we we tried more dyes last, was it last YouTube? Mm -hmm. They were some orangey. And somebody recommended pH. And yet, yes, we, we checked yes. the pH. So we, we checked and altered. We changed our... Our, we use white vinegar as the Morton and alum. Yes, we could use alum. There's other Mortons out there. Um, but we use white vinegar for all of our all of our other dyes that we could spot on. So we want to make this work with the white vinegar as the Morton. And yeah. that is the recommended Morton for all the dyes, really. It's, and it's the least, it's the most economical as well. Right. Oh. So wish us luck. We'll yep. keep you updated. We'll keep you posted on that. But I think we've we're starting to exhaust the. I don't know. The dye bath. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> the dye bath. <laughs> so oh. my daughter got me a Christmas present. So she mm -hmm. she's a chef. So she collects these beautiful knives, and they're hand forged in Valley City. Mm -hmm. um, Uncle Jed's iron. Yes. And mm -hmm. so for Christmas this year, she got me a knife that was made by him. And I don't, there was something, I don't remember what the problem was, but I finally got it today. And he showed up here. And so I got my Uncle Jed's iron knife because I have watched Libby. They're so sharp and they're so, and they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and he told me what this handle was made out of, and I can't remember. <laughs> it was a wood I'd never heard of. Mm. And then, so, I don't know if you can see the design on the knife. That is done with some different chemicals. Maybe we should ask him about dyeing. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and it is super sharp because when I, he came and he brought it. And yep. I was and then like, we just... Touching and he's like, yeah, super sharp. So uh, be careful. Beware. But and he'll sh sharpen them for the life mm -hmm. of the the knife. So I'm excited to use it. Since Libby told me I was getting this knife, every time I'm using my cheap dull knives, I think of my future knife. So it's like, it's actually an heirloom. It you is because it very is. Nice. Uh, and it's and it's make so she thought about my so I'm smaller got smaller hands I mean she thought of everything with how it should be and it's perfect yeah Can't she's so so thoughtful it. in that yeah. regard yeah yeah okay and now we had some questions for um, from last YouTube that mm -hmm. we should probably go through and okay one of them was there was a picture of a gal and she was weaving and, and it was very thin and it's called backstrap weaving that's not the name of the kit because she got the kit off etsy so it came already warped it came i think it was etsy it was etsy yep yep i can't remember which country it came from a lot uh, of what co it was something uv <laughs> It was UA dot C O. Anyway, it was from abroad. Was it Latvia? I think it was Latvia. That's anyway, C O, right? It's not C O, but that's what the little anyway. Maybe we can figure out what Yeah, what I took it was. a lot of pictures of the kit because yeah. we are working to we're thinking of redesigning mm -hmm. my uh, kit packaging. Mm -hmm. We wanna get away from the plastic packaging and do something more with. We don't even know. But we don't even know. <laughs> Anyone have any suggestions on that? <laughs> uh, we don't. We don't want to. We don't want to use plastic. Yeah. Uh, we don't like the way it looks, and mm -hmm. we don't like what it does. You know, impacting the environment. So we are trying to. It's cheap. It's readily available. But yeah. Yeah, and there isn't a lot of other kits out there that are still mm -hmm. using plastic bags. Yeah. So. so we're trying. But anyway, so I took yeah. a lot of pictures of this kit thinking, mm -hmm. oh, I could, mm -hmm. you know, learn from this. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, what I learned from it was she had a lot of the same printing for every kit, but then she put stickers on for the difference mm -hmm. like in the colors, which is really cool. 
Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it came with the yarn, with everything. All she had to do was strap this little thing around herself and, and start weaving. Start weaving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, it, would, it was really cool. It was really cool. It was is very well done kit. Um, it'll it'll end up making a little like a belt or a like a guitar strap. Yeah. Strap. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, there's many different uses. You can actually sew them together. Mm -hmm. Kind of similar to what the Inkle Loom does. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. which Pretty we cool. uh, we haven't demonstrated. We haven't ever. We haven't used, demonstrated. We haven't done an ankle loom. You know, we Kat have. Has done yeah, we it, so. have an employee down in the mill, Kathleen Gilbertson, that was last week's yes, uh, she staff has member used mm -hmm. and made um, some things. really cute things with it. So with it. we should have her demo that. That would be kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Might put yes. that on. So stay tuned for that one. Yeah. So that is what that was. Okay, and then we had a gal. First of all, I have to apologize. She was, it was very distracting and annoying for her, the, because I was frantically felting, because Teresa told me, you got to have this done. So I'm like, all right, I'm just going to felt during YouTube. And, and I was, and I'm sorry if that was annoying anyone else. Um, but anywho, um, that is not something that we do here on every YouTube, obviously, because no. that was the first time I think we'd done that. And we had mentioned how we think mm -hmm. it's therapeutic. Oh, yeah. It's just a I mean, same as the spinning wheel. Yeah. It's just a, a, a uh, rhythmic. It's, yes. Yes. Making. I love it. I love it. The, uh, the sound of making. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then she had a question and it, and, and, and she worded it as, is it necessary to wet felt fiber before running it through a needle filter? So I think we weren't, we weren't, we're not quite positive sure what she means with this question, yep. but so you had a thought and then I had a thought. Yeah. Yep. I, I was thinking, okay, cause, um, I've seen industrial needle filters that you run a back through to needle felt them and you run it through repetitively. That was my idea. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, what was my idea? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I was like, what am I going to say now? Okay, what what was my? <laughs> you said something about needle felting. Okay, okay, okay. Scratch that. Okay, so that I might I... scratch it. It was kind of funny. <laughs> I okay, because I was needle this felting a lot. I was needle felting on, my ideas. A, <laughs> on, you know, a, 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 a piece of felt. And so what I was thinking is that she meant, do you need to needle felt onto a piece of pre-felted fiber? And that's what I am assuming she meant. And then, well, no, of course not, because we have dear dear polar bear cub here that is a 3d dude that was not that is that is there was 3D. no wet felting there was involved. no wet felting it was all done with a needle oh wait that um, was a lie dang it <laughs> <laughs> it was a complete lie okay the dude has a couple <laughs> pre-felted balls <laughs> he's a boy <laughs> Some of Teresa's kids contain, do we have something here? A little pre-felted ball that we make to give, I call them cheater balls. <laughs> because like the snowman has a small, medium, and large little ball in there that, that, that gives folks a little boost boost in their felting. And it makes it go quicker and, you're, and, and it, it teaches you... Um, the basics without mm -hmm. making it take Yes, yeah, so like the hours. llama has... One ball, the chicken has one ball, the turkey has a couple balls, <laughs> the, <laughs> the bison has three balls, so so forth. So, yeah. anywho, so, but we're getting, what, what, okay, go, you answer your question. <laughs> okay. So, anyway, you wouldn't need that. It doesn't, wet felting doesn't need to happen first. It speeds no. it up. Yep. But it's not necessary. And no. so the way I took your question is there's the wet felters like we have, and mm -hmm. then there's needle felting felters. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to wet felt them before they go through the needle felting felters. <laughs> no, no. 
nope, it's a bat. It's just a... Yeah. I mean, there is, like, the opposite, like, when we did our lampshade, where we we didn't need a pump. <laughs> just no. scratch that. So um, on this coming weekend, when Jean is there needle felting a little bit, did she? Yes, she did. Was mm -hmm. it? Okay. Mm -hmm. So Jean's needle felting a little bit, and then it's going in the wet felter, and then they're needle felting some more. To embellish it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she's needle felting it, but she wants it even more felted. Mm -hmm. To and make it like a firmer surface. Kind of, there again, speeding up the process mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah. And a lot of times I have done ears or other flat pieces of my felting. Where I have started by needle felting a flat piece and then wet felted it because mm -hmm. I want it smoother. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, so there. Uh, so we tried to answer mm -hmm. your question. Yes, and then you also said, is it suggested for certain end products? Now, again, we took that as we have products that are all wet felted, you know, like our um, coasters, our insoles, um, the cushions, our needle felting cushions. Uh, we're not quite sure, or is it suggested for a certain end products? What, if we did not answer your question, dear heart, just ask again <laughs> what we missed in that regard. Tell us where we went wrong with our answer. Yeah. I will try again. You know, yeah. There we go. Okay. And then buttonhole stitch. It was recommended that Chris slows down and tries a buttonhole stitch. Which... I had told her, but I didn't know it was called a buttonhole stitch. I yeah. said, you should do what I do, <laughs> but I don't remember how to do it. Yes, yes. So And that's why then, I was watching videos, but I never, cause I didn't right. know what it was called. So so then we looked at Teresa's, Teresa has on her, her needle felting case that you can get the needle felting case through the Bear Creek felting. She did this beautiful button hole stitch, stitch all around it, and it's okay. So yes, I agree. That is the perfect stitch to go around those hearts. That's what I was picturing in my head. I just didn't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know the names of all of them, but yeah, yeah. that would have been perfect. Yep. It would have been. It Agreed. Been pretty and cool. I should slow down. Oftentimes there's so many things I do that I should just, whoa, slow down with, but I'm kind of like a hundred miles an hour. Yeah. True. So, good, good, good advice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we had a, a question for, or do you have any spinning classes coming up? Mm -hmm. And we just talked to our favorite spinning instructors. Yes. And they are uh, agreeing to do a class on March 11th. Mm -hmm. It's a one-day class. Yep. And she's they're getting us the details still, and mm -hmm. then I will be listing it very, very soon. Mm -hmm. uh, that's on March 11th. Mm -hmm. It's a Saturday. And then she also asked, can I try the wheels that we have here without taking a class? And you definitely can. Uh, the wheels are always here. Mm -hmm. We have our open days on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you make an appointment with us, call us. I'm coming. I'd like to try out all your wheels. Uh, we're here. Somebody Absolutely. is always here. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we would, Chris or I would like to be here to instruct mm -hmm. you. A lot of our other employees don't spin yet. <laughs> yet <laughs> but um so we'd like to give you you know some basic basics mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and now that we've tried all the wheels you know we can which has been so a little advice it was so much fun it was just so much fun we didn't want to stop we didn't want to stop but we have and to. we're gonna have to mm -hmm. stop this very uh oh, uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to speak tonight for the lions yes we are Enderlin. In Enderlin. So we need to, but first. And we but, need to plan what we're going to talk about. Yeah. But Which first. Chris is confident and I'm not. And she better not blow this. Oh, the pressure. Anyway, first we would like our, we have, of course, our question and answer time. And our last week's question was, what is Rock Day? We had many, many folks answer it. right. Yep. And uh, Teresa Kelly. Rock, no, no, no. Get, uh, blow, blow, blow. Uh, back the truck up. Back the truck up. The question last week was something different. I don't know what it was. What age? What is? What age should you start kids in the fiber arts? Yes. Mm-hmm. And somebody had the cutest answer. It was. 
and yeah. Teresa Kelly her it was you and you are the winner too so and she had a what is it a granddaughter yes it was going to be born on what Friday a Friday so she's here and I wonder if she started <laughs> if she's introduced her and she said how about Saturday <laughs> Yeah, it's it's so yeah. good. I mean, and that I mean that is the truth. It's never too soon. No, I mean to mm -hmm. get them loving uh, the fiber arts and understanding and making and the appreciation of you know just something handmade. Yeah, get these yeah. kids away from the screens and yeah. Right, and yeah. I I mean when I was growing up, I think I was interested in, but it, you know it wasn't readily available to me. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to make them. Make all of these things available Absolutely. for them to try. Mm -hmm. I really learned that with my own kids, that just to have a variety of things for them to try. And it really, and, you know, Libby had to ask. <laughs> but, you know, I was, you know, willing, mm -hmm. but I didn't, you know, think of it before. So thankfully she asked and she started knitting and working with Fiber at 7. So awesome. you can definitely start earlier, at, like Abby is doing. Yes. My grandbaby I can hardly wait till she comes to Grandma's big house again, and and we can work on a little poly she walk calls some this more. Grandma's big house. Yes, she does. It's pretty, it's darn pretty big. Cute. So you just need to contact us on BearCreekFelting.com, and we will send out your prize. Absolutely. And next week's question is, what is our go-to spinning fiber? If if you're going to come in here and you've never touched a spinning wheel, what is the fiber? that we will probably put in your hands. What is our go-to spinning fiber? It might fiber? be our all-around favorite fiber. It just might be. And, 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 and if you agree, I mean, and even, even our, yes, even our, our spinning, I mean, other spinning teachers, it's kind of a universal agreement that this is a go-to fiber. So what is it? Do, 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 do. Okay. Because it, once you find out, you should start raising it. Absolutely, and we let us know that you're fiber. raising it, because we could partner with you. Absolutely. Okay, God bless you all. We need to run. Yes. 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 Yes.